chance here for Bristol Bears. Into the Chiefs. Lightning with the ball. A very warm, sunny welcome back to the Premier 15s. As the curtain closes on the Six Nations, we are officially back in action. And what a treat to get things underway today with a game of this magnitude. Champion Saracens, who currently sit third in the table, welcome league leaders Extra Chiefs in a repeat of last year's final. This will be the third time these two sides meet this season, just two weeks after Exeter beat Saris in the cup final. Now, will the Chiefs be able to secure their third win of the season against the women in black, or will the hosts prevail? Great to have you with us here on BBC Sport and Premier15s.com. Hello and welcome back. The sun is shining and we're ready for some more Premier 15's action. It's great to have you with us and it's even better to have Rachel Burford with us too today. I mean, you've been super busy. Of course, we've just finished the Six Nations international break. Have you, have you had time to put your feet up? <laughs> no, I don't think anybody has. It's been a really busy period, but it's great, isn't it? See women's rugby with pulling in all different directions. So yeah, it's been good to get back in the fold at, at Harlequins as well. So these girls straight back into it. Yeah, like you say, they are straight back into it. It's great to see so many big names in both sides today. Yeah, I mean, it, everywhere you've got international predicates spring, sprinkled across both the Exeter Chiefs, but also in Saracens. And it'll be exciting to see how they can regroup after being away for so long, not mu having much prep time coming into this. And um, so yeah, but it's gonna be interesting to see how which team can manage that the best today. Yeah, I mean, we are restarting at this weekend and what a game to have to enjoy today. I mean, Saracens, they were, they are reigning champions, uh, extra Chiefs, league leaders. And I mean, there's starting to be a real rivalry between these two teams and it's great. The fans are really getting into it. Yeah, I mean, both teams are really loaded uh, across but both in the forwards and also in the back line. Both teams coming in really good form. Exeter, mm. 13 wins on the bounce. Same for Saracens. They come in with having won eight games apart from the, the cup final that was against Exeter. So there's a bit of old ground yeah. there that they'll want to rectify. But yeah, both teams in really good place. Got a mix of their internationals back. And I, yeah, the collision today and the physicality is going to be extraordinary. Yeah, speaking of that physicality, both teams have got an amazing set piece. You know, is that going to be a crucial element to the game today? Yeah, like in any game, mm. having a, a crucial operating set piece gives you that platform to play against so you can have as much sparkle and magic in the back line but unless you've got that platform and I think both teams will want to assert themselves you know massive driving mall from Saracens it's a big weapon of theirs they score most of their tries using their driving mall so you know both of them are going to get, want to have shots fired in both those departments and it is a quick turnaround for the players especially that integration back into the into their club's teams you know you know would they have had enough time to prepare for this one yeah, it will be really challenging. I suspect, you know, coming back in, they're just making sure that they get back into the systems of their club, making sure they know the calls, doing lots of walkthroughs, just priming, probably some team building stuff just to bring the group back together. You know, it has been a long period, internationals going off, whether that was for Pack 4 or that was for Six Nations. And, and now it's, you know, it's been a quick turnaround for them. But so it probably would have been quite an intense learning week mm. or just refresh week for a lot of yeah. players. Well, it's definitely going to be an exciting game. Now, while I've got you, I do want to ask, we've had the breaking news recently about the new head coach for the Red Roses, John Mitchell. You know, what do you make of that appointment and what kind of changes maybe he'll mix things up a bit what are you expecting from him well i think the key thing is like nobody really knows what to expect which i think is a really exciting yeah. place to be in you know majority of coaches i think emily scarrett mentioned it every time a new coach has come along they've known the system they've been involved with the players they know um, how the world of women's rugby works and this is a little bit different and it'll be exciting to see does he bring in some different changes you know we haven't he was obviously not going to be part of the red rose team until post the men's rugby world cup but yes yeah, ex extremely op exciting opportunity opportunity to see a new coach come in of his pedigree with all of his experience especially being at World Cups and, mm. and so for for the Red Roses I think they're all really excited to get a new voice in there and something for a bit different. It is a really exciting time for the internationals but also for us because we get some Premier 15's action today so we've got the champion Saracens against league leaders Exeter Chiefs how will this one go well only time will tell and Rachel Burford you're going to be heading out to commentary with Nathan Middleton but firstly let's hear from both the coaches as I caught up with Susie Appleby and Alex Osterbury.
Susie, great to see you. Now this week, your assistant coach, Steve Salvin, said this is going to be your biggest test. Do you agree? 100%. Why? Well, um, there's different challenges, aren't there? You know, we've, we've all, as a first team squad, been off the field for so long. So it's how, how quickly you, you, you regather and uh, how cohesive you are on the field. Um, but make no bones about Saris and they're a fantastic side. We're a good side, they've been performing well. So it should be a really good game. I mean, your track record against Saracens is pretty good, at least this season. I mean, you only beat them in the Cup two weeks ago, so confidence must be sky high. Well, I think uh, it was useful to play them in the Cup. Some of those players are on here today, and it's always good to feel, feel the side that you're playing against and, and then remember little things. So, yeah, you know, that was, that was a whole different world ago. Um, you know, this is the start of four incredibly important games, and that's all it is right now. Today is the next, the next step on hopefully a journey into those semi final stages. Now, you could potentially secure yourself a home semi final today. How important would that be for you and your, your team? Well, it's massive. I mean, we only get 50 tickets, but they're all. All our fans are all coming here today, which is brilliant because it's a long way from Exeter. But um, it's huge playing at Sandy Park. You can't over overstate how, how important that the family and the and the crowd is. So yeah, of course we want to play at home, but you know we're we're into a semi-final, which is brilliant. It's a good place to be, but of course we'd like that to be at home. Well, best of luck today. Go well. Thank you very much, Alex. Great to be back in league action. This week you said it's felt a bit like Christmas getting your internationals back in the fold what's it been like to get them back yeah it's brilliant having everyone back in the facility everyone back together is pretty special uh, you know the biggest thing about this group it's special it's enjoyable to be around we challenge each other and we push to be the best so to everyone back in the same room is absolutely fantastic and what was it like for you to see Marley Packer captain the England side to that victory and she's now committed to the club for another two years uh, fantastic uh, you know Marley's a very special person uh, important to us off the field, on the field, and seeing a you know, recognition as captain of your country, you know, on the biggest of stages with that 58,000 people lifting that trophy is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and we hope to see her lifting many more trophies in a Saracen shirt as well. So yeah, it's brilliant to have her on board. A massive part of what we've done over the last few years, and, uh, and certainly will play an important part in the next few as well. Well, a challenging fixture today against Exeter Chiefs. You are three wins on the bounce, and you've never lost to them at home. How are you feeling ahead of this one, and how have you prepared? It's, it's unbelievably exciting. People say, oh, it's a, it's a big game. Oh, how do you feel? Do you get nervous? Uh, nervous is part of the game, but it's actually the, the thrill of the challenge. You know, they've had a very good year, uh, and had a very good year last year. We you know tight games against them, including the final. And, you know, really excited to see what we can do. You know, the, the gauntlet's been laid down by them, and it's can we meet that? Can we be the best that we can be and see if we can put a performance on today? So, yeah, the, the nerves are more around the, how good can we be because we know we're going to have to be very good to beat a very good side. We can't wait to watch. Thanks for your time. Brilliant. Thank you. Alex, great. Osterbury and Susie Appleby there in conversation with Ashley Wilmot. A very good afternoon from the Stonex Stadium. Just two months have passed since the last Allianz Premier Fifth match for these two sides. And which side the Red Roses have become Grand Slam champions? John Mitchell has been announced as Simon Middleton's successor and we've appointed a new king. But who will be crowned the champions of England this season? This match in North London could go a long way to deciding that as the league leaders, Exeter Chiefs, travel to the champion Saracens in a repeat of last year's final. Just sit back, relax, soak up some of the gorgeous mid-May sunshine in what should be an enthralling afternoon at the Stonex Stadium. Let's have a look at how these two teams sit in the table heading into round 15. Across to Harper against Loughborough, the other match kicking off slightly later today. Six teams in action on Saturday, but as you can see, they're Exeter Chiefs leading at the moment after 14 rounds. 13 bonus point wins in a row since the opening day defeat across the Heartbreak. Saracens, a tricky season for the champions, particularly without their internationals at the start of the campaign because of the World Cup, but they're on an eight-match winning streak now, beginning to climb up the table. This match, huge implications on those top four places. Let's get a look at the confirmation of round 15. Those three games taking place yesterday. Huge win for Harlequins at the stoop over the bottom side. Harlequins, Ellie Kildun scoring four tries in that one. A bonus point win for the Warriors as well. Impressive in their run out against DMP Durham Sharks. And then Bristol Bears continuing their top four hopes with a bonus point win at Sale Sharks. Lark Davis, the England hooker, 
getting a couple of tries there. So this one, the Hat Plus 2 kickoff, and then on Premier15s.com you can watch Loughborough Lightning against Gloucester Hartbury this afternoon as well. If that takes your fancy, let's have a look at the two teams then. Saracens to start with and fresh from leading the Red Roses to a Grand Slam as captain and committing her future to the club for the next two seasons. Marley Packer returns as co-captain alongside Lottie Clapp. The pair are part of nine changes from the last Prem 15's outings against DMP. There's a whole new front five, complete with prop Hannah Bottomen, her first club appearance of the season after returning with England following injury at the World Cup. Recent England debutant May Campbell has 19 tries in all competition. Jess Breach is Sarri's top try scorer with 12 in her first season in North London. The champions, as I said, on an eight-match winning streak in the Premier 15s coming into this. On to the Chiefs, fresh from their Allianz Cup win. They'll be looking to secure a third win over Saris this season, having won 37-19 in the reverse fixture. Susie Appleby's made three changes from the Round 14 match at Sale when she last had her internationals to call on. Cleena Maloney, Ailey Sinclair and youngster Katie Buchanan coming in. Maloney scored twice in that 29-19 Cup final win over Saris. Maisie Allen's stellar season has been recognised with a nomination for the RPA Player of the Year this week, alongside Chiefs teammate Claudia McDonald. She's absent, though, with a knock. Allen is on 17 tries this campaign. The Chiefs looking to continue their record of winning every game so far on the road this season. Into the final preparations here, then, for these two teams at this half-past two kick-off. Saracen's really tried to make a, a name and some noise in this fixture. Expecting around 1,000 fans in this afternoon here in North London. Saw by some of our shots, the uh, team were greeted by the Saracen supporters with some flares, with some flags, and with some fans as well. As Poppy Leach leads out the league leaders. The replacements and a couple of the injured players getting their heavy packs on the back, running into this sunshine at the Stonex Stadium. Such incredible progress from a couple of years ago in their inaugural season. And this Sarri's Exeter rivalry really cranking up a notch as it was a few years ago in the men's game. Becoming a real fixture and a statement fixture and one to look out for in the Premier 15s. And there's the extra huddle. Just waiting for the Saracens to come out now. Each of those fans here enjoying this sunshine. Game will have a real test match feel to it. The amount of internationals, Lottie Clapp and Marley Packer, joint captains this afternoon, both with mascots in hand, as are a number of the Saracens players. The return of Hannah Bottomen, third from the front. All the players, in fact, with mascots in the home colours, of course. Chiefs changing to all white this afternoon. Just lining up Marley and Lottie. For a pre-match picture as well. Good to see the return, I'm sure, Sarri's fans. actually had a, a late team change for the Chiefs. Lynn van der Velden starts. Nicola Friday has been moved to the bench. She's had a, a knock on her nose in the warm-up. Rachel Bertha did spot a, a bit of trouble for Nicola Friday. Referee this afternoon. Harry Wolvan will be guiding us through proceedings. There's McGovern there just to hey, drop the ball. Team. Thankfully, the game Time hadn't on. started yet. A Kiwi number 10 getting us going in North London. 
in a weekend where the Premier 15s return. The champions against the league leaders settle in and enjoy what should be a real entertaining afternoon's action. Hannah Bottomman back in Saracens colours for the first time this campaign. First carry for her. Aitchison goes high. Ball has gone backwards. That's a very good pick up when it looked like it might run through the legs of Maisie Allen. Robinson with her hands on the ball for the first time. Strong extra carry. McGovern to the line. Here's Cantorna helping it on. Here's the Australian fullback, Laurie Kramer. Leach into proceedings. White on the same wavelength there. First scrum of the afternoon inside the opening minute. These opening exchanges, uh, Rachel, just to kind of settle the team down because I mentioned the build-up. This this has a real kind of test match feel to it in terms of the quality on show today. Yeah, absolutely. Both teams, you know, absolutely loaded with internationals returning. These two teams have been neck and neck throughout the season. It's a really good start from Saracens. Just saw the tactic there change from Polly Aitchison looking to kick nice and high to contest. Fine. Extra often have three in the backfields. So instead of giving them nice clean Six. ball, put a contestable up and put them under pressure. They really back their defence. They've got the ball back. Great first drive from Saracen. They have a penalty advantage. Infante uses it to Aitchison. Free play. Little dink over the top. Kenner trying to get the ball. And what a statement that is from the first pack down. Saracen's front five. Settling down and settling into their job for the afternoon. Uh, Hannah Bottomman back in the fold for international duty. And now getting the opportunity to represent Saracen's for the first time this season and set to Chief on the edge. Set out we'll early doors to make a statement in the Chief front on row. The edge. Just a metre, thank you. Of course, an all England front row since the last Premier 15s game. May Campbell earning a first England cap. Kelsey Clifford getting a couple of caps as well. Good take in one of the back pods. Casolo onto Campbell, but a space for the Saris hooker. Infante. Preferred today instead of Virvas. Another hard carry from Bottomman. Looked lively in the opening stages. Aitchison measuring up a kicking game in the opening stages. Short for Robinson. Harry from Johnson there. Looks to looking to clear their lines and Kramer with the big right boots. Aitchison inside to Jess Breach, who's been settling into life in this 15 role for Saracens. Still a a winger primarily for the Red Roses. Evans with her first carry. Aitchison a bit deeper this time and with a no-look pass. McKenna lets the ball bounce and just a, a gap nearly opened up. Long pass off the floor to Aitchison. No, Stellar Six Nations campaign for the Saracens fly half. Of course, still without the injured Zoe Harrison. Expect to be without her for the rest of the season. Aitchison with a dummy. Clever play. Kenner just not quite on the same wavelength. The next to look into counter attack. Cantorna with the hack forward. Breach coming back. Looking to try and work some space. Throws the ball out the tackle as Infante was trying to help her out. And the carry from Saris. Gregson trying to help them out of trouble. Still some work to do here. Good. To okay, okay. Trying to put some pressure on as Saris looked to try and get away from there. Tackle off to Thank you. Good work. Okay, available. Slow at the moment. Use Aitchison it. is deep. Way behind the try line. Yeah, and you've had. Here's Infante putting boot to ball. But well, that will stay in. Chance here for Exeter to run the ball. Here is Kramer now in the loose. Robinson. Maloney with the carry. Excellent game in the cup final against Saris, including those two tries. Zachary, Cantona, round the back. It's good work here in the loose. First player. Advantage to Saracens. Penalty advantage to Saracens for holding on. First player lifted. Credit in defence. Sarah McKenna, tap on the back. And a relieving clearing penalty. Extra really trying to put some pressure on there in defence. 
has been a, a fascinating opening couple of minutes. Seeing Holly H then put boot to ball quite a bit, trying to turn the defence, knowing that Exeter like to get off the line. They stay really well connected. A couple of errors, though, from both teams. We talked about how they're going to gel together quickly. It's a bit of miscommunication at times. But again, Saracen's just managed to weather all of that pressure. Campbell overcooks that one. Maloney then. Unfortunately, just couldn't keep it. Eyes on the ball, knocks it on at the back, oh, and oh. Saracen's actually come out with that with a bit of a positive scrum for them. Yeah, especially after on the last scrum, the dominance that Saracen showed, unlike May Campbell, to overthrow there. I just talked then about the communication the and connections. Here, you, you'd think that Leanne Infante would want to try and clear her lines there. But McGovern does so well in the backfield, doesn't she? Always marshalling it so well, picking up the cues from the kickers. Crouch. This is the overcooked one from Campbell. Maloney Set. just leaping up. Another good scrum from Saracen. And another penalty advantage as well. Infante trying to get away. Spots a bit of space down the blind side. Puts boot to ball. That didn't touch the extra player like a child. Dribble out. No, so it would have been. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no advantage. We'll go back <coughs> Sorry, I thought for it was the touched. penalty. Thanks, mate. Well, that'll be a worrying sign. Loose out across the front. Two big scrums from Saracens. On the edge. It's edge again, Chief. Do. A simple penalty just gets them a little bit more territory, apply a bit more pressure. Yeah, with the, with the talent that Chiefs have got, you would have expected a bit more of a solid scrum early on. Good take at the back this time, much cleaner from Saracen. Aitchison back inside, huge hit there. Maloney reading the play. Infante, McKenna the first receiver. Aitchison, this is well played from Saracen's breach, just unable to take the flat pass. Advantage to the Chiefs. Johnson is the acting number nine. advantage, see what comes. Release, six, release! Quite yeah, seeing that. If you're just joining us late, replacement for yeah. Nicola Friday van der Velden. It's a bit unfortunate there that ball didn't go to hand to Jess Breach. They'd oh, actually beaten Exeter on the fold. Holly Hston working hard to be an extra player on that right hand side. Okay. Just couldn't find Jess Breach. Cleanly. Smiles on the Chiefs' faces. Why not? They sit top of the league. They've already secured one cup this season. Everything looks in a very good place for the Devonians. Smiles too on the uh, Saracens' bench as uh, Mayor Montiel, the Canadian international, drawing a bit of the limelight there. So. Uh, some of the younger fans. Time off here. It's to just getting a bit of treatment for the injury. Just, uh, we'll probably keep reiterating okay, this a few times this afternoon, but the conditions pitch side, very, very warm. It's 20, 21 degrees on whichever weather app you like to use, but pitch side, having watched some of the uh, pre-match preparations of Rachel Ashley. It's very warm down there, and I was just sat down watching them, let alone running around for 40 minutes. It's going to be a testing afternoon for the stamina. Wingers in behind Kel. One where Wingers move. replacements, Crouch. finishers on the bench will have to be used Bind. wisely by both sets Set. of coaches. Go, Sarri's dominant on there. First two scrubs to the put in, and that's another great shove. Look at that Saracen's front five dominating, and Marley Packer picks up from the back. Ball under the arm, Sarri's all over the Chiefs at scrum time. Carry now from Louise McMillan. Good work from the Scottish lock. Now the backs to try and use it. Gregson brought down. Turnover penalty for holding on though for Chiefs this time. Oh, Sheehan on the ball, the winger there. Getting her arms on it and stopping that Sarri's attack, but at scrum time, Rachel, there's work to be done. Yeah, again, on Exeter Chiefs attacking ball, you'd expect them to be able to hold the scrum, try and get the ball out as quick as possible. 
But the drive there, you just see Hannah Bottomman get up in it underneath here, her opposite number. And great attack off the back bit, but important still on the edge there. Great chop tackle here from Kate Zachary, which allows for a winger to get in and locked over the ball. Small. Well, the line out certainly functioning at the moment for Chiefs. Great take in the middle from Leach. Maloney with her hands on the ball. Forward, wait, wait. Onside. Good kick, finds a grass. Breach looking for the return. She also finds grass, a couple of bounces. Kramer looking up. Kicking Jewel. Five meters. And now heading to the arms of Holly Aitchison. Just to try and go deep. McGovern thinks about the quick step, the Kiwi. Breaks the first tackle. Really settled into life in the Premier no, 15. In Top point scorer across the league. The Chiefs number 10 this season. Susie Appleby when signing her said, can't believe she hasn't been part of the Blackburns conversation. Played in a development game for them, but... Okay, tackle level release! Settled into back life at Sandy Park back, quite back. nicely. Don't go in, don't go in, no! Bit of work to do here to secure the ball. And the referee Harry Wallband was very clear then of not going in. And Offside given. Five as well in field. Yeah, Saracen's just trying to make a mess of the breakdown, trying to slow it down, draw more players in so they can get their backfield nice and set. Then just too eager. I think it was May Campbell just comes offside. Just over 10 minutes gone. Still nil nil here. Yours, in fact, in the whole of the Premier 15's campaign, they've only conceded two tries in the opening 20 minutes, so they do keep things tight in the opening stages. And they have done so far this season. Neither side really any meaningful territory or possession inside the opposition's 22. Van der Velden held up there and does secure it. Zachary looping ball out to the far side. Here is Buchanan with a bit of space. 19-year-old winger. Getting a bit of Premier 15's action as Sharifa Casolo lines one up and big hit there on the Chiefs. Vantage, knock on! And that one down towards the ankles and well, we picked up the game and the quality and the, the players on show, Rachel. There has been one or two mistakes from either side. The game's not really going to any sort of flow yet. Yeah, both teams making errors, connections, communication. Yeah, we talked about how disconnected some of these teams have been over the Six Nations period and the Pack Four. We're seeing glimpses of what both the, what both teams can do. Lovely set piece play, nice and wide. Just there, McGovern just drops her hands. Really difficult pass to take. Just gives Saracens back again. Another big scrum. Crouch. Bind. What have Exeter got in response Six. here? Hope Rogers, Cleena Maloney, and Delika Menin. Hugely experienced, and that is much Nine, better. That's across, Grabbing to the reset. sideways. Balls out. Ball has come out, and Fante does well to give it to Breach. A grubber kick forward. That's a clever one. Turning Buchanan. Kramer coming across. Yeah, and that is on the line. Something you associate with Jess Breach, a tactical ticking Sarah's game, but line. playing fullback for a club, it's something line. she's going to have to work on and obviously has. Yeah, it's always been a work on for Jess Breach to, to get different ways of attacking and, and being a different threat on the ball. And she's been fantastic this season for Saracens. No. Top try scorer for them. But you can just see that's a tactic of Saracens, just wanting to turn Exeter Chief, take that line speed out of them. Ebony Jeffries just down on a knee, so time called off again. So we'll look at uh, some of the opening stats. Nearly 13 minutes gone. Sari's just edging possession over the Chiefs, yeah, as well as the meters made. Really as you'd uh, probably expect, given the first few and opening stages. Okay. Time on. Day for sunshine and sun cream at the Stonex. Where those <coughs> fans are housed. We're in the opposite stand Over here, more. the brand new stand here. Very impressive, of course, in action yesterday as Saracen's men secured a, a seventh final in ten years, beating Northampton here. 
end of season tickets, ticket holders allowed to come back in today. And Sarri's trying to secure their mark towards the top four. And the women's team, their own final. Corrine Grant, the Scotland international. There's the hard Rips carry from by White play on. South African Jacobs and back then first, stolen by first. the Chiefs. Leach into Jeffries, back up. Trying to knock the ball on in contact there, yes she has. And there will be another scrum to Saracens. That was such good work from Maisie Allen. Got the rip in the tackle, got the turnover. Okay, Mark, just here, another error creeping in. It's both teams just really struggling to find any flow at the moment. Both teams have got really good records in terms of carry dominance, but also on the defensive side of things as well. So it's going to take time to break each other down. Hope side has won the last five Proud. meetings in the Premier 15s. Bind. Set. Desperate to try and close the gap on Gloucester Heartbreak away at Loughborough. Three o'clock kickoff this afternoon. We'll bring you updates of that once that gets underway. Aitchison, clever kick, picked up by co-captain Clapp. In behind, we finally, Saracens. Yes, Going to go back for a penalty, though. Penalty flat there. Captain. And a word for Poppy Leach as well, early on, inside 15 minutes. Okay, three penalties against the Leafs every 15 minutes. She must have played square in the scrum. Rich, where's the mark, mate? Thanks, mate. OK, number one across the scrum. Yeah. So I think uh, Aaron Wallbaum with those three early penalties. Just, just a word for Poppy Leach, a, a warning to, to the whole team to say you're on a pre-yellow card, yellow card. Yeah, well, the narrative of every scrum so far is going Saracen's way, so Extra Chief need to find a way to minimise more being penalised in that area, or otherwise it's just going to gift Saracens these kind of opportunities. And things for both sides just not quite clicking. Maybe it's the heat, maybe it's the return of the internationals coming back into teams where they haven't really been a part of for a couple of months. And those little shows, those little glimpses, the things that Almost just seemed very natural when you've been playing with someone and part of a squad for so long. They're just not quite clicking for both these sides at the moment. Yeah, I think it's a mixture of all the above. Timing off each other, getting back into your club systems. This game is going to have its toll both physically and mentally with the heat and what's at stake as well. Bind. mentioned Exeter's bonus point wins it's 13 in a row since the defeat at home in round one to Gloucester Heartbreak during that time 40 plus point wins in the last seven games they're a team very much in form very settled in what they're doing they know how they want to play so far this afternoon White got into their game plan. Set. Another penalty, another scrum penalty to Saracens and an immediate yellow card. And it'll be Hope Rogers leaving the field. Difficult opening stages for the extra pack. Yeah, you have to say that has been coming just at scrum. They've not been able to deal with the power of Bottomman, Campbell and Clifford in the front row. Yeah, it's been a huge struggle and with the warning, Hope Rogers takes her marching orders. Big loss for Exeter Chief, it's open in 10 minutes now. I think Saracen's produced from them all, they've got more tries from any other side from lineouts this season. What Exeter doing well initially disrupting it, I think they've got their hands on the ball there, Johnson wrestling for it. Hannah Bottomman going round the bite side, burst blue one, looks to go over in the corner. Hannah Bottomman with a back finish. Props just don't do that sort of thing. 
What a return on her first appearance of the season. The Red Roses brought Hannah Bottomham with a finish of the highest, highest quality. And what a way to introduce yourself back into club colours. Initially so good from Exeter Chiefs, disrupting the driving more. But Saracens found a way to get the ball out and then it was all about who reacted the quickest. And Hannah Bottomham. See here, Exeter Chiefs in and amongst Ollie, Ollie. it, disrupting. And you heard the referee call, use it. Marley Packer twisting and turning and finding a way to get the ball out. And this is just unfair. Hannah Bottomen taking a huge run up against the winger and the fullback. And he'll dart into the corner. And that's what can happen. On the back of a yellow card, immediately punished. Holly Aitchison missing with the conversion. But Saracens, as we see again here in this Hannah Bottomen finish, one for the collection. Great first bump off, running up against two backs, but putting her feet up, making sure they don't touch the touchline. Watch a lot of uh, rugby league finishes, obviously, the England prop. Brilliant finish from her. Yeah, she's been so good since she's come back from her injury, hasn't she? Really standing out for England. And now making her mark for Saracens. We watched any of the behind the scenes with the Red Doses documentary on England Rugby's YouTube, a hugely impassioned speech from Hannah before the France game, revving up the troops. She's really grown in the kind of seniority and leadership role as part of that team. There's a change for the Chiefs and Gabby Semp coming on. And one less forward, of course, still. Hope Rogers, seven and a bit minutes to serve of her yellow card. Four in the line okay, for the island hooker, Cleena Maloney, to aim for. Leach, a regular target. Allen, the acting scrum half. Robinson, the distributor. McGovern, now picked up under difficult circumstances there. Okay, tackle! From Sinclair, but forced back in the tackle. Robinson. Great grip Armstead's there from Katha Jacobs. The Saracen's in the mood, okay, Casolo no comes in as well. Knocked on and ripped in the tackle by Black forward. You hear it so often, this part yeah, of the world, the Wolfpack defence, oh. the gritty nature, the hard hits, and they just Time seem off. very psyched up at the moment, Saracen's, particularly when it's coming yeah. to their D. Well, we just need to know who's yeah, you can just see an energy lift in them. An attack, extra there, wanting to play out the back, trying to stretch, but 11, yeah. all of it's static just allowed Saracens to watch the ball play out the back okay. and then get the good read. Sydney Gredson, good. big tackle, drives them back five metres. So they massively pride themselves on is their defensive efforts. They like to suffocate teams, take away all time and space from them, make them make poor decisions or errors. So Katie Buchanan coming off for Abby Middlebrook, a 21-year-old prop. Birthday yesterday. Fine. So sixth ever Premier 15's appearance. Six. They need some numbers in the front row, and in she comes. The loose head. Difficult one at the back, but Exeter finally come away with a more solid scrum. Saracens back in possession with the lead from Bottomman's try. Infante. The out ball is. Packer. Okay, number nine shirt, just a, a third Premier 15 start of the season for Infante. Played the last few cup games in this number nine battle with Ella Vivas. Knock on. Part of the England setup as Maloney there very nearly read the pass. Just a knock on. Ran into the frame of uh, Hannah Bottomman. Yeah, not somebody you'd want to run into, but the speed of ball from Saracens and the accuracy of pass from Leanne Infanti. Playing that speed, that's what they're all about. Want to play the momentum, but good spot by Maloney. So Gary Semp packing down at number eight at the moment. With Ebony Jeffries off for her. Mitchell Johnson switched to open Six. side. 
Coming round to the left, Marley Packer goes to the right, but excellent hit I from Maisie Allen. What a season the extra number seven is having. Good spot from Infante with a kick in behind. Zachary, the American, chasing hard. Back at 13 today to try and step around Corey Grant. Such a vital part of everything the Chiefs do. Zachary, back in the 13 shirt the past few All weeks. After, have a lot of appearances at number eight as well. That kick will only find Aitchison, there's numbers to her left there. Looking to try and assess the play, puts the ball under her left arm, looks for the offload, brilliant offload to Clapp, following on the support line, Lottie Clapp with a dummy, pins her ears back, Clapp, what a try from Saracens! Lottie Clapp under the post, the second of the afternoon for them, a brilliant score, a ninth of the season, the creativity of Holly Aitchison and the finishing of Lottie Clapp, second try for the champions. That's great work from Saracens. Not sure McGovern wanted to put the ball right down the middle of Holly Aitchison's throat. You can see Bre Jess Breach just outside her, pointing, go left, opportunity. And then she just looks up, sees two forwards in front of her, takes them on. And Lottie Clapp, one of the best wingers, just always lurking on the shoulders of the ball carriers. Nice little show and go there, just to turn McGovern. never like comparing the women's game to the men's game but Lottie Clapp that runs that Chris Ashton used to always make those support lines I don't know if she watches him or learns from him or maybe he learns from her perhaps is Holly Aitchison knocks over the extras but she is one of the best in the business of just always being on that right side that shoulder line just in case the ball pops out yeah we see again here just loose kick from McGovern and then all of a sudden extra are under pressure they've got front rows in front of with Holly Aitchison on the ball, and then, yeah, just cutting the angle, coming back against the defenders. But she's always lurking, she's always looking for work, always trying to get on the ball. That's a quality finish. Such a vital part of the Saracens set up the now American international, of course. Switch allegiances with the uh, three year residency rule. 11 caps for England, up to seven now for the USA, as again. Another couple of big hits come in. Solo, the open side, right to the heart of it. Bit of space here for Menin to come into. Allen on the inside, trying to throw the ball out of the tackle. Chief, just beginning to, to force things a bit. It's It won't have, have been tested like this, you think, in the past few months. They've won a lot of games by big score lines that... Saracens Cup game and the Gloucester Harbury Cup games were close encounters, but with everyone back, with everyone fit, they haven't found themselves in this sort of position too often this season. So every time they get a little bit of momentum, good shape outside them, and error creeps in. It's just, just disappointing them because it just lets them let Saracens off any pressure that they are applying to them. Crouch. A couple of instructions you might hear uh, once or twice Fine. this afternoon. We've got the extra coaching staff, Susie Appleby and Steve Set. Salvin, the assistant coach, just to our right hand side 10 at 12 meters away or so bit of insight if we can uh, get it from them Infante whips it out to Aitchison looking for that touch line out on the full from the England kicker right idea just slightly overcooked execution yeah well we've seen Holly Aitchison execute these perfectly in the past just gets it wrong by a couple of inches Johnson up in the middle again, not the cleanest of lineouts. Both sides struggled when throwing the ball in. Van der Velden, the Dutch forward. It's a hard carry, but met with some hard defence. Here is Gabby Sepp again, Play ripped on. out the tackle. This time Lottie Clapp there in defence. Infante thought about the patch, just maybe slightly out of her range. Gives it short to Packer. There was five or six on the offload there if Packer was just unable to free oh, her hands. On. And now the ball has been turned over. Sorry. Allen. No, not with her there. Not one with of the, the RPA there. Player of the Year nominees. I'm with Claudia McDonald. Another extra chief. And Natasha Hunt, the Gloucester Hartbury captain, the three. Who will be one of those. And as the Prem 15's Player of the Year. Finally, a bit of momentum in attack for the Chiefs. Johnson. 
Robinson just juggled a couple of times by McGovern. Bit of space in behind there. Difficult bounce as well. It's come back Exeter's way. Here is Zachary looking for the corner. Kay Zachary to get Exeter back into it. Brilliant, brilliant finish from the Chiefs outside centre. So much work to do still there with that bouncing ball. McGovern with the insights to try and find a bit of space. A kind bounce, but what a finish that is from Kate Zachary. 12th yeah, try of the campaign for her. Well, it's the first time we've really seen Exeter dominating in the ball carries forwards, doing a lot of hard work. This was a big opportunity missed by Saracens. Marley Packer, last defender on her with five players outside, but under all sorts of pressure. Great read from Kate Zachary. That's where the turnover came. It's just the speed of ball and then the recognition. Saracens slightly out of place sees that Corin Grant comes up and then never let the ball bounce because you never know and from this moment you know that Kate Zachary is going to finish in the corner too much work for Jess Breach to do such an important part of everything X to do Kate Zachary 33 year old 15s and 7s caps USA captain McGovern, a low drill kick, just pulled to the left. The Chiefs on the board, and especially with 14 players, that'll be such a huge boost to them. Yeah, important score, keeping them in this game while they're down to 14 players. Uh, just the bounce of the ball turns Holly Aitchison inside out. And we've seen Kate Zachary score plenty of great tries. She's such a weapon for Exeter such a reliable player 16 tries last year and what was seen as a incredible season up to 12 now for the campaign as Aitchison gets things restarted Allen under pressure did well in the air to take the ball and the Chiefs just a, a bit more momentum you sense in themselves a bit more confidence as Rogers now back on the field so we are up to the full complement of 15. Robinson down the blind side, the Chiefs go. Again, the handling error, forcing them backwards. Kramer with the pickup work. Solo again. How many hard hits has she done with that right shoulder so far this afternoon? Tackle off! Campbell now getting in low. Good loss. McGovern, clever step away. Looks to try and get round McKenna. Still going. The Chiefs fly half. That's good work under pressure. Just reset it again. Rogers back in the frame. Great carry from the loose head. The hand off. However, a hand in there from yes. Hannah Bosman <laughs> gets up with a wry smile on her face. And Georgia Evans having a, a word as well. I think this will mean a, a chat for Captain Marley Packer. Georgia Evans. Uh, a warning via Marley Packer. Oh, I hope Rogers certainly trying to make up for that 10 minutes in the sim bin for a team. But you're right, you just feel some momentum coming oh, now towards Exeter. They've got a bit of confidence, a bit oh, of energy. Things are starting to stick for them. Great, uh, Hope Rogers back in her uh, Penn State University days. And you can see it in the loose as well when she gets going. She's a bundle of energy, very, very hard to stop. There are a number of excellent international signings from Susie Appleby. Remember, this team was put together in, in COVID. You know, trying to sort their inaugural season out. Broken away. It's been some journey. Back-to-back -back Allianz Cup wins and now leading the league with Tackle! four rounds to go of the 2022-23 season. Mitchell Johnson, another one of those signings from America. <laughs> Slower ball this time. And May Campbell. Ball down, please. Thank you. This time over the ball as well. Yeah, back here, if you want to go. Along with Marley Packer, one of those who really enjoys jackal time. Enjoys getting over the ball. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, the Saris penalty. If you're going to kick the touch, I'm happy to kick it. Okay. Time off. One of the best in the business, isn't she? Play down both teams. Pretty low to the ground, so she hasn't got far to go, but the strength and power to stay over and locked on the ball. It was um, Poppy Leach just got isolated, lost her footing. And then the recognition, the decision making around the breakdown, when to go in, when not to go in, is always so critical. And Main Campbell often gets it right. Okay. Linda van der Velden just receiving some uh, treatment for Exeter. Catherine Jacobs just down as well for Saris at the moment. Okay, hold. Fee McIntosh. Primed and ready, but just waiting to get the nod. Okay, please, Saris. Thank you. Catherine Jacobs holding a shoulder there. Looks to be in some pain, and it's not one that could be shaken off from the South African. open side against extra in the cup final she looks in a, a lot of pain Catherine Jacobs but certainly a ready-made replacement in 24 23 year old Fee McIntosh top line out taker in the Premier 15s this season McIntosh and a number on the back so she should be pretty easy to pick out Solo, Campbell into the line, great line is Gregson looking for support. Grant on the inside line, well read by the covering defence. Good counter. Counter run from Exeter is good. Saracen's Move just lines. about to keep hold of the ball. Fante, Aitchison, McKenna onto Breach in some space out wide. Jess Breach pinning her ears back, still going for the line, just short. Falls out. Saracen so, so close. Here is Evans, the Welsh flying side. Low. She's just short as well. Saracen sniffing a third try. Head down from Clifford. Scored in the cup final. Short Goes close line, again. Right. Extra scrambling. Saracen's confident. Half appeals. Referee has a good look. Advantage offside. Penalty. Instead, we'll go back for a penalty for offside. Still in striking distance. The quick tap from Saris. Hannah Bottomham is there. Looking for Move a right. second score. Infante busy digging around. That's looped up. Aitchison gathers. Helps it on. Gregson picks up the scraps. And tackle release. Yeah, advantage, number two on the floor, making the tackle. Another advantage coming Saracen's way inside the 22. On your feet to make a tackle. Another couple of penalties within quick succession. On your feet to tackle. Okay. Now, simple three for someone of it. Holly Aitchison. Decision to make here between... Harley. Packer, Aitchison. Harley, Harley. Back as well. And the call is the scrum, and well, you can't blame them considering how that's gone so far this afternoon. Yeah, it's given them a quality platform, and if they get the advantage, then all of the back line, their ears will prick up and want to play with a bit of a free ball. But it's a lovely set piece play off the line out, which saw Sydney Gregson. She stacked Marley out on the outside of the 13 channel. Just wonder if they were all watching what was going to happen out wide. Took their eye off Gregson, who went through, which gave them all that momentum. Throw. Just slightly Five. right of centre then this scrum. There's three Six. backs to the left, three backs to the right. First securing the ball, which Saracens have done with ease. And Marley Packer again has the ball at her feet as the scrum goes forward. Infante just tries to help it on. Stolen by Laura Sheehan. But she knew that. Uh, That's where. Yeah. We'll be back to Saracens. Ailey Sinclair, sorry, rather than Sheehan, who's on the, uh, the bench this afternoon. That's the attempt from Saracens, just want to keep it in the scrum, knowing that they've got the ascendancy there. Referee just talking to Exeter Chiefs. 
both Zadika Menon and Hope Rogers are saying you've got to be able to stay square. Heads in your gaps, Chiefs. Well, the territory is quite close, 12-5. Sarri's ahead on the scoreboard. Anna Bottoman and Lottie Clapp with the try as Kate Zachary in response for the Chiefs. And Bind. What's overall been a very tight game between the two sides. Set. Champions edging it at the moment. This time the scrum disrupted Infante. Space here for Breach with the step around. Zachary helps it on. That is quality. Quality from Jess Breach. A simple, simple run in for Corey Grant's 11th of the season. Saracen sucking in the Chiefs at the play. The pace and the vision from Breach and Corey Grant, the Scottish winger, strolls in. Sarries with a third try just before half time. Just absolute quality play. Giving the ball to Jess Breach in a bit of space. Take on her opposite number one on one. She just gets on the outside of Zachary, which makes Buchanan have to come in. And Corin Grant just holding her whip, just dots it in the corner. It's a clap you might have heard on the referee's mic then, just asking the question about the penalties at scrum time. Rogers has already seen 10 minutes in the bin for that. It's Aitchison. Never really takes a time with the run up, Holly Aitchison. There's that one just short. And a third attempt of the afternoon. 17 5, it remains as we look again at this grand finish. Leanne and Fancy's been excellent at the back, getting the ball away whilst under pressure. But here, Jess Breek just kicks out there. Just does enough to get on the outside. Buchanan didn't trust Zachary there. Could have probably held her width as well. But superb try. Champions showing so away. much of what has made them the dominant force in, in the Premier 15s era. Title wins in 18, 19 and last year. Certainly mean to hit their form today. Breach with the kick. McGovern back there. Eyes one up to Fancy. Does well to stretch forward. Aitchison now loads of space in the backfield. In behind Ailey Sinclair. And that's going to bounce kindly to Clap. On it. Couple of bounces there. Just unable to gather it in the air. The Saracens try that's scorer. Right. Put a space down the blind now. side here for Sinclair to go there. forward for. Okay. Immediate penalty given to the Chiefs. Two's legal, but tackler on the wrong side. Good bit of kick battle there. Just both team marshalling the backfield. Holly Aitchison kicking off that backfield space so well. So close for Lottie Clapp. That's a big error. McGovern not finding her touch. And then the kick turning Chiefs. Robinson trying to get some distance. And these balls have been bouncing horribly for the players trying to catch them. Infante in breach. And making a bit of a hash of that. And Chiefs in possession. And Chiefs looking to race away. Here is. What a try! Extra Chiefs out of nothing have their second. And it is another prop, the Lika Menin. We've seen Anna Bottom with the finish, and then the afterburners there from the Canadian. And it all came from a kick that bounced kindly from a cheese point of view. Not dealt with from Saracens, and that would be a big boost heading into half time. Oh, it's such a good work. Here, Flo Robinson under a lot of pressure to get this kick away. It's all about the chase. We talk about it time and time again. The kick is only as good as the chase and the follow-up. The yeah, Infanti takes it and just offloads to Jess Breach, who's not expecting it. And then here, what about the turn of pace? Just in the backs do this to the opposite number. Andervelda working so hard to get the arms free. And then just the afterburners on. And Menin, superb finish to run it in just before half-time. Important score. So Liv McGovern lining up this kick. And that should be the final play of the first half. Good strike from McGovern.
just makes things very, very interesting going into the break. A topsy-turvy game. But that Delica men in try just keep things very, very interesting. We expected it to be tight. We expected it to be full of quality. And there'll be, I think, contrasting team talk. The next uh, who really at times have had one or two missteps, one or two errors, particularly handling-wise. They've struggled to really enforce themselves in the game, but opportunist tries from Kate Zachary and Delika Menon have kept this in. But Hannah Bottomman, Lottie Clapp and Corinne Grant have given Saracens a 17-12 lead at half-time at the Sonex. Be down with Ashley and Rachel to get a look at some of the first half action in just a second, but let's have a look at some of the statistics across that first 40 minutes. And then look at that. Well, I said it was tight. Possession 50-50 between the two sides. Carries almost nearly on point. And tackles not too far different as well as meters may. But Chiefs particularly will be disappointed with penalties. And then the scrum time ones in particular there. Saracens have done a real job on them. Territory very similar as well. But let's have some thoughts on that first 40 minutes in depth and a look at the highlights as Rachel Burford has joined Ashley Wilmot. Thanks, Nathan. Cheers. I'm, yeah, like you say, I'm here with Rachel. Rachel, we knew it was going to be an interesting first half. Both teams struggling to find their flow. We can see there uh, from the stats, 50% uh, possession for both teams. I mean, it's it's been a bit of a tough start for them. Yeah, I think both teams, number of errors, you know, trying to find their flows, some connections not quite working, a bit of timing, a bit of communication. But I think in those last 10 minutes, we started to see both sides come alive. You can see the extra when they get that momentum, they're really threatening. But at the same time, Saracen's defence is really putting it on. I know, it's great to see them in action though, isn't it? It's great to see them battle it out uh, at the Stone X. And I mean, we talked at the beginning of the show about their set piece. Uh, both teams struggling to start with, but actually Exeter Chiefs struggling a little bit more. Yeah, definitely in the, in the scrum set piece, you know, the dominance from the pack from Saracens has been outstanding and it's something that Chiefs are going to need to rectify in the second half because the majority of their penalties are coming through there. We've already seen one yellow card. You can hear Saracens asking, you know, how many more until there's going to be another one and it's going to, it's a big amount of pressure to, to be on one side and this is going back on their own scrum, let alone a defending scrum. So it's going to be a big talking point at half time for them. Yeah, Saracen's really strong. Marley Packer coming out off the back there. And like you just mentioned, there was that yellow card for Hope Rogers in the extra Chiefs shirt. Not the start they would have wanted. No, certainly not. But I think, you know, they found their way back into the game, scoring um, that point at the end there. It's Kate Zachary into the corner to pull them back in. Really important moments to make sure they stay in this fixture. Well, I mean, speaking of those tries, Hannah Bottoman flew over the line for the first one, but not until 17 minutes in. I mean, she... They took their time to uh, find their rhythm, but, you know, it's about getting those points at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, it was, and it was really good. You know, one of their first entries into the 22, and they came away with points. And initially, Exeter Chiefs did really well to really disrupt the driving mall. But Marley Packer found a way to get the ball out, and it's all about reaction skills here. And Hannah Bottoman just taking on some players, a little bit smaller than there, one-on-one, -on -one, down that channel, and then to dive in the corner like that, being aware of the feet, being aware of the touchline. You know, it's not an easy skill. She makes it look easy, but the power game bumping off one, getting to the try line and then just making sure her feet are nowhere near. It's a great impact from her to come back into the Saracen shirt. Yeah, she definitely does make it look easy and it was great to see the scoreboard tick over with the Saracens try and they just kept going because the co-captain Lottie Clapp managed to find herself over that whitewash as well. Let's take a look, shall we? So it was a great bit of play. It all came from pressure from McGovern, probably not her best strike, kicking it right down the middle to where they're fully loaded, four in the backfield, Holly Aitchison just picking off what's in front of her. She does this so well. See, she's got two forwards in front of her and Lottie Clatt, one of the hardest working wingers around, always looking for work, always getting on the shoulders of the ball carrier. Ball back in two hands, just puts doubt in McGovern's mind, turns her inside out and we know that Lottie Clatt can finish from a long range out, but also from that close as well. Yeah, and like you say, Holly Aitchison, she's having a great game as well. Her kicking game is on fire. Yeah, she's just so calm and composed, isn't she? Their, their systems and their exits are really, really well organised. But, you know, when she picks up, she gets her moment. She just looks up, sees what's in front of her and then plays what she sees. And she's great at that. 
And then, of course, we did see extra cheese come back firing, with starting with that all-important turnover. Yeah, well, initially they were in control and then they managed to lose the ball. And then Leanne Infante trying to find the space, but closed down really well by Kate Zachary. Again, another rip in the contact area. Bit of an error from Packer, which you don't normally see, but then it's just the transition, the speed to get being in defence, into attack. You can see here just the backs and the forwards working to get to some shape. And McGovern here just can see that Sinclair, sorry, Corrin's up in the line, so there's a bit of space in the background. And when you've got a bouncing ball, all bets are off. And Kate Zachary, we know how strong she is as a finisher. Again, a big dive into the corner. Not much there that Jess Breach can do to stop that. No, it was great foresight from Liv McGovern and great to see them get one over that whitewash. You can just see it again here. It's just capitalising on those opportunities, isn't it? Exactly. They're, they're a really strong team. When they enter into the 22, they often come away with points. And I think it's just they come alive. And they're really alert. They're aware. They're, it's just the subtlety. A soft kick to put in like that is, is not an easy skill to do, and she picks it off so well. Saracen's third try of the game, coming off the back of a good scrum there as well. Yeah, quality scrum, got the ball out nice and quick, giving Jess Breach an opportunity to take somebody on one-on-one. -on -one. She just kicks out enough, which then what that does to the winger makes them have to bite in, and then all of a sudden, she's Corin Grant is completely free on her outside to then just run in. But it all comes from the platform. There, extra actually get a bit of a shove on, so it's really well worked by Marley Packer just to flick it out of the back to Leanne Infante. And then Jess Breach drawing in two defenders under all sorts of pressure, but still manages to get the pass away. They do look very happy with that one, don't they? <laughs> and then out of nowhere, just before uh, half time, of course, Extra Cheese managed to get another one on the scoreboard. Yeah, quite critical just before half time, you know. A bit of nothing, it came out of nothing really. A bit of a loose kick from. Robinson but it's all about the chase and the pressure communication here I think Jess Breach thought she was going to carry and then Kramer just being all over that ball like an absolute rash and then it's just again the quick thinking quick hands great body transition and here getting your hands through the tackle being able to offload and then men in I mean talk about afterburners McKenna is no slouch but can't keep up and I think you know this is a real turning point considering the half time just came up well there we have it the score is 17 at 12 at half time. Saracens just edging it, and I'm pleased to be able to introduce Saracens players uh, Poppy Clill and also uh, Claudia McDonald from the Extra Chiefs team. Guys, thanks so much for joining us in studio. Poppy, I'm going to come to you first. I mean, you are leading, but it's been a tough first half, hasn't it? <laughs> Here we go. job like that but um, yeah they did the girls did really well to get that score there um, soak up some pressure down here and then get back up there get another try and um, you know we've unfortunately let Exa back in it with two really um, copped at the ball too easy twice and then they've got those um, incredible finishers and they did exactly that. Claudia I mean you're on the back foot here a little bit not a position that Exa Chiefs are actually used to being. Uh, no not necessarily we normally have quite a strong start but it's certainly something that we we had probably anticipated coming to Saracens. You know, we, we knew coming here was going to be tough. It's a long journey from Exeter. Uh, it's a tough stadium to come to. And Saracens, you know, they had some really good players that were re really on form at the moment. Like we know they're going to be a good opposition. So I think we were prepared, prepared to go under the sticks, uh, to be under pressure. And now like you see that work rate, that effort in the last couple of minutes of the first half. I think we're going to see that again. We're going to come out firing in the second half. I think it's going to be another, another good game of rugby. And so what sort of things will be being said in that changing room right now? Uh, I think the obvious one is obviously about the scrum. Uh, you know, we've been unfortunate to give away a few penalties there. Um, but you know, again, like we've got a, you know we've got an unbelievable front row and a great pack. So I've no doubt that it'll be a few corrections and they'll come out um, and you know really steadied and, and sort of put together again for the second half. Uh, and then other than that, yeah, keep engaged in that kick battle. That's clearly something that the Saracens are engaging in, and we've just got to make sure we're fielding those balls and sending them back at them. And speaking of the scrum, Poppy something you know a little thing or two about I mean are you you must be really pleased with how Saracens are capitalizing on that yeah I think the the girls in the front row are doing a great job and and um, we're keeping it in there and winning those penalties and then um, marching them back down the down the field and that's exactly what we want to do and hopefully the second half we, we do exactly the same and um, you know we get we keep reaping the rewards of that scrum because it's definitely dominant yeah I mean extra cheese they did come come out a little bit stronger in the second half of that first half do you think they're gonna give you a run for your money in the second half and, and you know how are you going to be able to close them down yeah, absolutely. They scored with 14 players on the pitch. They scored this um, Simbin and the 
off the pitch they still managed to score so of course I'm sure they're going to score a few more and um, with individual uh, talents they've got they're going to be great some great tries but we've just got to make sure we stick to what we're, we're good at and stick to what we've done in that first um, first half and hope we come out on the right side of the score. George you've got a, semi, a home semi-final on the line here that must be really important. Yeah I think that's huge I mean we know that uh, for opposition to come down to us it's hard you know, it's hard to get on the road and travel down to Mexico uh, we've got an incredible fan base and we want to put that show on for them really and, and show that you know that we want those top two spots in the league and hopefully a home semi-final so yeah it's going to be a tough end of the season but I think if we you know we've got four opportunities to keep it so hopefully we can do it. <laughs> yeah Rach what are you expecting from these two teams going into that second half because we've already seen changes from extra Chiefs and which we're not also used to seeing that from them. Yeah well I think I think we're seeing them actually get settled into the game there's been a bit quite a bit of disruption for extra Chiefs late change early on a couple of changes throughout the game the yellow card you just started to see them settle in that second half but you can never underestimate a Saracen side especially at home you you know, haven't been able to beat them here yet. No. Still no. time, but you know what Saracens can be like. So I think they're relentless in defence, and that's going to be a real, real weapon. And as Poppy said, they're not going to move away from what's going really well. Scrum set piece, using that as their weapon, making sure they get good territory. But it's still, you know, very, very tight. Does it play on your mind, um, Poppy, the fact that you know this season you might have beaten them in the final last season, but this season they've got quite a good track record against you guys. Yeah, it's funny. We've never beaten them down at Sandy Park and they've never beaten us here. And I think that uh, that's a record that should stay. And uh, <laughs> it, it does. Well, yeah, well, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? And now, fortunately, now that we've got you guys in the studio, I do want to talk to you because, of, of course, you've just been in Six Nations duty. Now you're back at the club. Um, and there's been some big news that you've got a new head coach, John Mitchell. Uh, you know, what's the thoughts in camp? Can you give us some insight? Well, it got announced when we weren't in camp, so we've not really been like sort of mm. around the buzz. But you know, the girls are excited to get you know sort of a, a new voice, a new um, sort of eyes on training, and just get our heads down and work. And I think when a new coach comes in, you just got to be like, yes, yeah, sir, whatever you want. Do you want a cup of tea? Like, <laughs> just get your heads down, and get working, because you know they come in with different ideas, different sort of uh, styles they want to play. And I think we're just already uh, really excited to, to kick on and kick on to the 2025 World Cup. Yeah, cool. Does it mean like everyone kind of raises their bar a little bit now? Um, I don't think that I think we're you know always pushing the standards higher and higher in training and, and in camp and uh, and for those games. But I think absolutely it kind of you know might ruffle a few feathers and um, you know different coaches have different opinions, different ways they want to play the game, and that both better for certain players and, and less well for other players. So I think yeah, absolutely everybody's going to try and put their stamp uh, you know to the new coach and, and prove that they want to be on that team. So we're just going to open up potentially a few more opportunities. But yeah, I think it'll be good 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 to get fresh eyes in. Yeah, I mean, mix it up a little bit, right? Guys, great to have you in, with us in the studio. Rach, I know you've got to run back up to commentary. Good luck to both of you in the second half. Uh, now, O2 Inside Line have been at it again, bringing you all the very best bits of the international season. Now, let's take a look at that Grand Slam win just a few weeks ago. England France is always a tough game. Definitely going to have to take a moment to take it all in on Saturday. I think when you get to a game like this, when you sort of know the outcome of the tournament lies on it, you're always going to get nervous. I'm just super excited. A record-breaking crowd at Twickenham HQ, it doesn't get much better. Whatever happens in the build-up, I need to go out onto that pitch and nail my role and do everything I can for the team to get the win that we want. Let's get excited. This is the last big push. Rose on red. Red! Rose <laughs> players who can win one-on-one -on -one battles that's what we want to create okay there won't be many pictures where it's just space in front of you this weekend but what there will be is one-on-ones and I'd back us in most one-on-ones against any team <laughs> True to what we've done, yeah? 
We've built our game, okay? Let's get on par today, pick our moments, be confident, do the things that we've been doing really well. Play the game, don't play the occasion, play the game. Time for action, we'll do all our talking afterwards, right? Well, let's just go, play the game, be the best version of ourselves, and if they're better than us, fair play, okay? But I better won't be. the 2023 Grand Slam decider, England against France. Well, a little teaser into the game for England against France. Uh, if you don't know the results, uh, without trying to spoil to you, England secured another Grand Slam, as we were just talking about. But if you want to watch the full episode of the Red Roses behind the scenes, head to England Rugby's okay. YouTube channel. Nearly 30 minutes of this episode available for you. As, uh, two teams are out. Referee has a blow, and Holly Aitchison gets us going in this uh, second foot, half. And Hoppy Leach comes forward, doesn't quite gather it. And while I'm out from the referees, I think we're saying that uh, came off a, a ship. Saracens straight on the march at the start of this second 40. Fancy, I think she's trying to play it against an extra player there. Huge hit on. The McIntosh coming in, the player with uh, no number on in the first half for Kappa Jacobs. On it, get out the way. And there is this an advantage on the play for Sarids. Looking down the touchline. Five, five. Okay, Keen lies to Poppy Leach for offside. Five, offside. running to the mark. Part, of course, of... Uh, England's plans during the Six Nations. Lucy Packer, Mo Hunt and Ella Virvas on the bench for Saracens today. Those who occupy the, the nine jersey. First line out of the second half. No Campbell, usually so reliable, but one or two issues in that first 40. Evans is the front pod oh. jumper. Saracens immediately go to the right-hand side and good initial momentum before Chiefs recover. Okay, that's one, Saris. And the back through, Hannah Bottoman, ready and waiting. Leanne Station Ray. Opening try scorer of the game. Infante calling for some replacements. And they're beginning to help yeah, as Gasolo now. now gets her hands on the ball. Aitchison has a look up, goes direct with Gregson. Fante, that's in behind Bottoman. A couple of attempted hacks forward, but Saracens regather. Evans round the back, Aitchison just delayed for a second, actually rode the first tackle through tackle. Allen, but wasn't unable to unleash the ball this time. Packer, McKenna, Evans now, two to bring down the Welsh flanker. Saracens beginning to get into their stride. This is quicker ball there. Making dominant carries inside the 22. Aitchison back inside for Campbell. Infante to Clifford now. Good drive from the Saracens tight head. Aitchison just beginning to really pull the strings in the centre. Going over the play now. Saracens quick ball for Casolo with her head down. And off! She goes close. Back up, gets a boot to the face there, I think, before she goes close. Infante, Campbell to Bottoman, just slightly upright into contact. That allowed Exeter to go close. Campbell now for the line, and there is the bonus point score. It was relentless pressure, relentless carries from the champions, and it is May Campbell, a 20th try of the season in all competitions, who goes over with a snipe from the base of the ruck. Saracen strike early in the second half. Impressive start from Saracens in this second half. All off the back of errors from Exeter. But here, great shape lined up on the outside. Hannah Bottomans dealt with initially on this carry. Then you can see the forwards all working round. Exeter Chief thinking they're going to go the same way, and May Campbell just picks it off. So, so good, May Campbell. And those close scores. Bit of a diminutive play, you might say, for the front row, but that has its benefits and that low centre of gravity, the ability to get under tackles, to snipe through, to burrow under 
attempted tackles really paying dividends for her this season is Aitchison adds another couple and that will be a huge boost 24 12 the score to Saracens five minutes into the second half see again here the setup from Bottoman Great finish from May Campbell, riding those two challenges and able to just get under it. White knock on. And the other game is a three o'clock kickoff at Franklin's Gardens. It is Loughborough 5, Gloucester Hartbury 14. Second place Gloucester Hartbury, of course. The result stays like this. We'll go back top of the table. Long way to go in that one. Five minutes before half time in Northamptonshire. what words have been said at half time because Saracens Frank dominant Sheen. in that first half when it came to scrum time put in for the hosts again it's got some momentum forward not the complete dominance we have seen Gregson with the dummy buys a bit of space Sydney Gregson racing through she's got breach on her outside Gregson fancies it alone Good cover tackle on her. Eventually brought down Infante. Infante's just a knock on. Short to Casolo. Just a knock on in the tackle for me. We'll go back for the scrum, but Sydney Gregson there. I think she was thought initially about the offload to breach. The space opened up and she backed herself and backed herself before the cover tackle came across. It was a great play off the set piece. Just getting to the wide channel. Kate Zachary worried about the outside threats of Jess Breach. But here you've got to give that, you've got to give it to Jess Breach, give it to the wheels on the outside. Credit Katie Buchanan there coming across with that tackle. We saw from a similar position in the first half, inside the 22, Sarri's split their backs, they went three and three. This one again, pretty much central, but there are Five slightly to the Five right, Aitchison and Breach behind each other. McKenna the and Gregson then just the outside back. them. I think Aitchison and Breach are looking to sweep to the left. Just having another word with Infante while this scrum resets. I think they're keeping an eye on McGovern, seeing where she's going to stack in the backfield. stop from Exeter before Saracens pile on the pressure, pile on the power and head forwards. Aitchison switches play to McKenna. Still be a penalty advantage for the scrum, so what can Saracens produce here? Evans takes the direct route. And we'll go back. There you are. Okay. And the bottom and Marley Packer, Touch Holly Aitchison in conversation. Aitchison looking to the touchline now. Great strike, right behind that from our commentary position, and that'll be a line out six or so metres away from the extra try line. Four, sub, please. Linda. She's just playing with such confidence, isn't she? Holly Aitchison, just there. You can see her in, in the pictures, just talking to people around her, giving the direction of the way they want to play. She's been excellent with the kicking boot, directing the backfield. And we need to toast on for Lind van der Velden. Saracens, well, not the cleanest of lineouts, but Packer does come away with it. And they just about come away with the ball. Bottomer. Takes two, then three to bring her down. Good placement, Infante, back to the blind side. Aitchison, Packer, McKenna for the corner, dots it down. So simple, so effective, and so, so good from Saracens, clicking into gear. And in this form, they've just got too much for any team. And that is a fifth score, Sarah McKenna. 
a third try this season for her and Sari's beginning to show their class they're yeah, just so good line out didn't go to plan but they still found a way Hannah Bottom and key carrier for them draws in two defenders and you just see the forwards all working really tight to the breakdown and then Leanna Fancy picks off the outside just holding her whip Sarah McKenna getting on the outside lovely touch from Holly H and just letting the ball do the work Aitchison from the touchline the one successful conversion for the fly half this afternoon kicking did become a bit of a topic across the six nations and england's kicking as we see this again saracens first driving to the right and whipping it down the blind side yeah, just the hands there from marley packer and holly h and just letting the defenders draw onto them and letting the ball do the work putting it to the outside channel where mckenna then puts the pace on 29-12 to Saracens then as Corrine Grant knocks the ball on and then Casolo takes it in front of her, so offside. Oh, so frustrating, especially from a coach's perspective. Oh. Yep, good there, good there, good there. So this is going to give them a shot right into the corner. And then line has been functioning really well. Yep. Exeter, two opportunistic, you'd say, scores in the first half from a position where they look quite out of the game. 17-12 at half time. Five calls. Slightly kind, but this their best attacking platform so far in the second half. First part is secure, taking the ball. Maloney, two tries in the cup final. Twelve tries this season. And that's not really going too far, so Robinson gives it to Cantona through the direct route. Leach, Kramer with a goose step and a shimmy. Out to the far side and Sinclair. Robinson to Rogers, bruising a couple of challenges on the American prop. Cantona acting as playmaker. Ripped, Ripped in the tackle. And another brilliant rip. How many times have we That's said this? Ball. Louise McMillan this time. Him. With the hard work That's in the tackle. Ball, number three. Yes, no. a penalty for Saracens to relieve the pressure. That's a huge defensive set from Saracens yet again. Big opportunity missed for Exeter. Just a little bit indecisive. The contact area. Cantorna going right to the line. Flat to Delika Menin. Yeah, they do really well to stretch them. Sucked in a lot of defenders. Now they've just got to keep playing on top. Interesting ball presentation. Okay. No, you haven't. So say it earlier. Like Body on the line stuff here Six from ball. Saracens. It's throwing themselves. We'll slow it down if we have to. In some dark the places. Early. But here yeah, they're just not asking questions from Saracen. Not full defensive line. Just tipping the ball on isn't going to disrupt them. Kenner, final try scorer, helping it on to Gregson. Aitchison. No. Not lifting ball in the off. Up you come, nine. Back foot. Big dump on the ground there from the Chiefs. Clifford. Oh, it it's a bit more chat at the ruck from the ball, both three. sides. Yeah, number one, sorry. As you said earlier, extra. Not used to really being in this position, seeing themselves so down on the scoreboard. Thank you, Marley. Yeah, it's just about how they can keep absorbing this pressure, how they can take their moments when they get them. Yeah, They've I'm going to keep following the game if they don't give them early, so it's up to them. them. Five call, thank you. Seems to be having flows on the edge for a couple of phases, and then they lose focus <sighs> and give the ball back to Saracens, but discipline as well. Extra. Pretty good in that department usually. Exeter win the ball from the line out. Can they get some phases together? Can they get their structure together? They just haven't really seen anything of what you expect from the Chiefs. 
Robinson, McGovern, now Zachary. Big, strong left four puts McKenna on the ground. Leach now with the dummy into the frame of Clifford. Menin. Second try scorer for the Chiefs. Kramer now, some numbers out here for Exeter. Leach with the wraparound, back to Kramer, the Australian. Infante drops a shoulder, just a okay, bit of a it. high tackle then. And Chiefs throwing the ball in, and that's been spotted by assistant referee on the far side, Richard Gordon and Jeff Highcock on the flags this afternoon. And just that second tackle from Infante, you could uh, clearly see just slightly high. Liv, you going to nudge for touch? Yeah, OK. If you want to do that, and then we'll get we'll make sure we'll make sure these two are okay. Okay, Liv, you can go. That was much better play, wasn't it? Speed her up, forwards working hard round the corner, getting on the ball, taking it on pace. Where are we on the line? George Evans just down on the floor, receiving some treatment at the moment for Saracens. Kelsey Clifford was treated, stretched for a bit of cramp. Uh, we yes. mentioned the hot conditions. It, the sunshine has gone behind the clouds for a second, but still very, very humid and won't feel any less difficult in this weather as Exeter again. Marley, not goal. quite on point at set piece You're time. Outside, yeah, it's just not going yeah, right outside. for them, is it? Each time they get a great opportunity or they work so hard to find themselves in a great attacking space. Just the error lets them down. Bina, step back. Just the focus here. Step back. There, okay. to the left. And you see, Cleaner Maloney is uh, quite obviously Poppy Leach to one side. Head down as soon as she took the ball, she knew that call was coming. Enthusiasm you get with any match Fine. from Marley Packer 29 12 ahead, acting like it's nil Set. nil in the first minute and the first scrub of the match. This one the cross on the mark, crabbing to a left and on the cross, carried back. Cross this time is the decision. Aitchison to Kramer, the greatest defensive line from Saracens initially. Now, don't go to McGovern. Have a little grub forward. Tries of no, no, no from CD Appleby from our left hand side. And there's Aitchison with a step away, then the break. Superb from the England fly half. Steps again, Holly Aitchison. Wriggles out the tackle with the handoff. Now she needs women in black to come support her. Holding on is the call very quickly on the mark there, Harry Walbau. Georgia let's Evans. 10 metres, let's go. With some afters. He had a warning in the first half. And the warning in the first half, as you just heard there, coming to fruition. It'll be another 10 forward for Exeter. It was a lovely little line break from Holly Aitchison again, Isolated. just playing heads up rugby, looking what's in front of her. Big show and go, yep, ball in back. two hands. Here, she's trying to find her support. But it's great work over the ball. Effortlessly glides around the park, On Holly Aitchison. She makes the game look so easy. Time off, number three. Sub. Those years in sevens, used to identifying space, the ability to beat a player. Coming to fruition in the 15s game now as Kelsey Clifford comes off. Alex Ellis on for her. Yeah. Maloney, not quite straight the last time. To the back for Johnson. Both on the ball. Good tussle in the air, both getting hands on the ball. Johnson trying to secure it for Exeter, it does pop out. And back to them. Okay, yeah. Tackle release now, release. Place the ball. All a bit of a mess and a scramble Ashford. and a scrap, but Chiefs have it. Off to come. Yeah, Just over 20 off. to go. They need a score. They need some momentum as McGovern loops it over. Again, she's trying yeah, things. Line. The Chiefs number 10. Okay. She wants line, to try and get her team yours, on the foot foot. A little grubber a few minutes ago, the looping okay. pass. She's trying to spot opportunities, but the execution at the moment. Not quite there. Yeah, it's just frustrating, isn't it? Trying to force things, trying to make things happen. 
but often when you move away from your, your processes, what they're really good at, good dominant carries, playing on fast foot, okay. front That's build, which is what creates them opportunities nice in the edges forming, there. Forward. You can see what she's trying to do there. Leanne Infanti gets up in that passing channel. Good cover defence in the backfield as well. Crouch. Bind. New member of the Saris front row, Canadian Alex Ellis into the frame. Immediate free kick given. Oh, what a relief that would be from a Chiefs point of view. And Robinson takes matters into her own hands, keen to get on with proceedings. No tackle, play on, no tackle. Now tackle, off you come. McGovern standing deep. Cantona, Zachary. No, not with her there. Huge appeals from the Saracens players and one or two supporters as well as we went on that wraparound. Here is McGovern back inside. Ellis equal to the runner of Ailey Sinclair. McGovern Balance. now. And Turner with the knock on this time. Evans back to Aitchison. Hand on the kick and again all just a bit scrappy for a game that we, we we talked up birth in terms of quality and the players on show it's sometimes you have to say maybe slightly disappointed in just in terms of the the execution from both sides and, and basic skills yeah, yeah it's just the accuracy has been off we talked about the timing between the players the connections but also playing it at this intensity does things to you but okay. it's just extra chiefs not getting that go forward, they're not being dominant with their carries, they're trying to play to the outside and they're not recognising that the Saracens aren't really put, ever putting anybody into the breakdown, they're really particular about which breakdowns they're going to attack, which just allows all of them to be on their feet, there's no front field space, and you just have a swarm of black shirts around you and then you end up with the errors that we're seeing from Exeter Chiefs at the moment. Those supporting the women in black would have been enjoying what they've seen so far, as yeah, we said pre-match, about 50 or so extra Bind. fans have made the journey. In a crowd of Set. expected to be about a thousand here in North London. We tick past the three-quarter mark. 20 yeah, minutes to go. Saracens 29. Five tries and a bonus point secured. Exit to 12. Took over the top, looking for okay, let's just Lottie Glatt, still not live. quite. Still live. Executed again, and that accuracy we we're just speaking about. Yeah, yeah, thanks, mate. All of this should be slightly Sorry. caveated, Five maybe man. with an asterisk of the, yeah. the heat today, Five the humidity. Calls. I don't think these teams will have played in a game this intense, in this heat, since the back end oh, of sorry, sorry, last sorry. season, really. The Red Roses against okay, France yeah. was a warm day a couple of weeks ago, now. but it's uh, not been this warm in England for, for quite some time when it's come to the Premier 15, so perhaps a factor for that. What have the Chiefs got in response? They're going to have to make moves now. They've rarely been in to the Saracens 22. They tackle us tackle off! Again, Infante this time. Off two, you've lost, good. McGovern, short to Saku, looks to try and pirouette herself through the tackles, but don't go in, don't Saracens go. not buying that. On from Tatosi. Meridian Hooker and with uh, Hope Rogers, both part of the World Rugby Team of the Year after their performances at the World Cup. There is a lot of quality okay, tackle five off. within this side. At the moment, it's to, on course for second defeat of the campaign. Carry back. Aitchison looks for the touchline what a brilliant kick well there's one kick in the first half not quite on range and maybe she was just kind of settling to life back into the saracen system but the opening stage is this second half she's been brilliant breaks passes offloads and a kicking game number as well one white, sir, please. Looking so comfortable in the number 10 shirt now Sorry, and what's so good about a kicking game is that she won't ever force the kick if it's not on she's not prepared she's not in the right position okay. she won't yeah. force it she'll just set it up Get her pods working and then get herself a better angle. Talika Menin off 
for Exeter. Fresh legs trying to come on. No wonder the thoughts of uh, Zoe Harrison watching her club mate bossing the number 10 shirt at both Saracens and Red Roses level. Very good friends they are, and there was a 10-12 combination between them both that worked pretty well. But, uh, rather than number 10, let's talk about this extra ball because that was brilliant as Buchanan steps away. Wonderful work from the winger. Slight of foot beating a couple of defenders. But then, all over the ball, Marley Packer with that traditional celebration. Isolated. The turnover queen when it comes to Saracen strikes again. Great body position, low over the ball. Initial break by Buchanan, but once Marley Packer gets herself set, a real struggle to get her off. Kick, unfortunately, from uh, Saracen's point of view, is not. No, back foot, gone back into foot touch. 12. Went for back, distance, Holly Aitchison. Didn't quite reach the touch line. Back was off. Back foot, good. Robinson. Back to McGovern. Wing is on. Under a bit of pressure. Gets some height on that ball. Aitchison right underneath it. Infante. Into the middle where Clapp was trying to hit the ball at some pace. Evans thought about getting the ball, instead it went to McIntosh, but crossing the call as she ran in behind her. Number six, step forward as well. Okay. And this is the kick and the attempted touch finder and Buchanan there. Great on the bit line. of athleticism to keep the ball in. Yeah, really good work. Knows where the yeah, touch line is, knows the, the laws of the Some game on. to be able to keep it in. Important point there because yeah, that goes out. They're under an immense amount of pressure in their own 22. They've really got to try and shift this White momentum, three, get some and really ten. good go forward. At the moment, yeah, they're not on, being able to, to dominate the game line at all, which is just giving all the success and energy back to Saracens. Nick, are you happy to restart? Yeah, time Changes on. Changes are plenty from both sides. Virbas. And more on for Saracens, McGilvray and Hanlon on for the Chiefs is Maloney's tricky oh, afternoon fun. throwing in continues, not straight again. It's really Exeter Chiefs set piece just has not functioned today. They've had a couple of good line outs for driving walls, but recent times relatively really successful in these two departments just the disruption from the Saracens pack this afternoon Crouch. it's just taken all of that dominance away from them Bind. and that creeps into your confidence Set. as well especially with the fatigue that's now coming into the game far side all gone down from that scrub good this side okay you see the again I'm gonna come across Okay, Mark's there. Reset. Height on this side, please, both of you. Feet up, binds up. See, all you can hear is the Saracens players on, just gearing each other up. Claudine McDonald, who's normally Bind. a starter in this extra team, is normally that player for them. Set. Hit two, three, three, two, three, three. Ah! Making a bit of energy about them at the moment from the Chiefs. Their body language slightly down. Vivas to Aitchison. Again, clever from the Saracens, number 10. Difficult for Kramer to deal with. Has a look up, just assesses her options. Don't forward, White. Aitchison On side now. reads the kick and whips it out to Jess Breach in a bit of space. Attempt to grubber, hits McGilvray. She recovers well, the Chiefs replacement, but then extra over the ball for holding on on Breach. And they have themselves a penalty. Good work from Exeter. Yeah, great turnover from Maisie Allen. On, they're all ten, quite. Yes! Smart little thinking there, just quick tap, playing away. And they're breaking through again here. Exeter beginning to find some momentum. Robinson looking for options. Thought about the snipe, just brought down. Not out, Alan not out. Scrum half. Cantona, McGilvray, 
Numbers here for the Chiefs out to the far side. Buchanan into the forward pass, but she'll dive into Wigger. And they're on the board in the second half for Chiefs. Is that the bit of momentum in the closing stages they need? You just sense there's got something in these final 12 minutes or so. And that quick tap, that quick invention, and it's got some just rewards. Well, we just spoke about the line-out not functioning. Just think maybe a message has come on, let's just play tempo, keep it high, quick taps. Get Saracens on the back foot, later stages of the game. And it's just the quick ball, great clear out. Too many Saracens players stacked around the ruck. Simple hands, lovely here. Just gets through the first defender, plays out the back. And Kate Zachary had two options and Buchanan finds herself in the corner. Free, happy enough with a potential uh, forward pass as Cantona just strikes across to the right, taking over some kicking duties. So 29 17. Time off, one and two is the score. Well, that just shows how dangerous Exeter can be when they win the, the game line, they're winning the collisions. Yeah, time's still off though. Getting Saracens on the back foot and then well, stretching them. She's really beginning to be unloaded now. Hannah Bottomman, a try scoring return on her first appearance of the season. And what a try it was as well. We'll have a look Come at it on. with our analysis full time. May Campbell's work is done as well. Jodie Retty and Maya Montiel on for those two. So within two scores now, Exeter. Another one, and things get interesting, and down the blind side they go. What a step that is from Sinclair, still going, great work from the winger. Boosting a number of defenders. Exeter in behind Saracens, the women in black struggling to recover. There's numbers out onto the left-hand side. Quick hands, brilliant hands. Johnson, Maloney, Buchanan again outsider. Cleaner Maloney just unable to execute. Was looking to draw the player and put the winger in. You can see what she was trying to do, but you just wonder, all the momentum in their favour, drop your head down, get in between the two defenders coming across. This is a lovely little draw and pass on the outside. Little show and go, like she's going to kick, it just offsets Jess Breach, and then she gets on the outside of two more defenders. Great impact Crouch. from the bench at the moment. Just injecting some tempo into the game. Find. Set. 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 Just added a real different feel to the game, the dominance of Saracens, even at scrum time now that we've seen for the first hour or so, looks to have got Aitchison, knock on that's one. a high one, won't go into touch. Okay, knock on at the base from nine. Scrum. Go back for another Saracen scrum, knock on at the base there. Knock on. Well, Leanne Infante was, has been under all sorts of pressure at, at the breakdown and at, sorry at the scrum has learned to deal with it. Virvas there just getting introduced to that pressure. Crouch. Find. Set. Set. Ah! Ah! Yes. Saracens with the free kick from that scrum. Great but ball. Exeter going forwards when the players pat down. I haven't seen that too much this afternoon. It's just a frustrating one that shouldn't be in the game. It should be a non-negotiable, those kind of tricks. Talking of tricks, Kramer managed to keep that in. Kramer did really well there. Buchanan with the kick forward. Aitchison looking to try and get in wait, behind Robinson, wait. but she reads, reads it well. Outside now, she's passed the ball. Kramer now in the middle. They've got numbers to the right hand side, but Kramer launches one. Brilliant kick from the fullback. Always turning inside. Jess Breach. But to use her footwork and speed here, Breach, but extra try to get in on the turnover. Saracens scrambling to regather. Virvas. Then very, very nearly the foot coming me, through was Maloney. Off her foot is the call, so Saracen still inside their 22. X to now, just with a, a burst inside, of energy in these breakdowns. 
Seven off. Mentioned again each time in the Premier 15s. Sackler off. And whenever these two sides have met, oh, the home side has come out top on top. Wing is on. Heading that way at the moment. Cantona. Robinson trying to find a gap in the middle. Does well the scrum half. Good power when initially she hit contact. Penalty for not rolling away as well. And things just beginning to shift the Chiefs way. Score here really makes the final few minutes very, very interesting. Just a sense of urgency. Oh, but then they butcher an opportunity to get into the corner by not making touch. Touch, no quick. Next yeah. Chiefs. So many times when things, you, just small, small moments, small, small decisions. Barry, thank you. And then accuracy and execution, we spoke about it so many times, just not gone their way. Whether it's a line-up, whether it's a kick to touch, whether it's a two-on-one. It's one of those games that they're going to end up watching back and just looking at all the missed opportunities that they had. Well, that line-out, this time functioning well with Leach gathering from the low knees. Throw in. Has the ball in her hand now, the Irish hooker, and this is a good driving ball. From Exeter, no, Saris is trying to come through and more, who's penalised. Advantage on this play, here is McGilvray under the left arm, the, in the number 20 international. Short ball looking for the run of Semph. This is better from Exeter. Helping it on is Kramer. Plays back well. Robinson down the blind side, Flo Robinson for the corner. Good tackle, bringing it down. Advantage to go back. Going to go all the way back for the penalty advantage. Credit the covering Saracen's defence then, because Robinson looked like she was in. Oh, so good, good little spot and yeah. snipe. Just not allowing Saracen's to set, but great cover tackle there from Jess Breach. Knew that she had to wrap her up and get use the touchline as her friend. Yeah, I've got five minutes, just under. Just under five minutes, the referee's clock. We're uh, just a bit behind, just a reminder, we're not tied up to the referee's clock in the Premier 15s. Numbers. Numbers. Try and be as accurate as uh, we possibly can. <coughs> Who's in? Important line-out for Exeter. A score here Advice. makes things interesting, but it goes over the top. Two knock-ons, first whites, then blacks. From... Again. The small moments, the knock on in the line out, and Saracens will have themselves a scrub. The just error on error, isn't it? They're compounding them. They work so hard to get themselves a great opportunity. Lack of accuracy, lack of concentration. Just gives the ball back to Saracens and relieves the pressure. of head in hands moments throughout this game for extra Boys. chief Set. Port and scrum this for Saracens good drive forward penalty advantage again as Packer goes on the charge from the base of it looping round ball comes loose but we go back for the offside Saracens get up again No, I'm at three minutes and ten, mate. Three minutes and ten now on the referee's clock. Whichever uh, mate's play he was talking to then. As Aitchison puts it into touch. Numbers! A couple of minutes left then here. Time running out for Exeter Chiefs. We'll get the Alliance Premier 15's player of the match with Rachel Burford in just a second after this play. Okay, nine ones. Chiefs don't go forward. Holly Aitchison now 
Saracens Wait, will be happy with this kicking exchange, this kicking Take tennis. Here is Cantona. Sinclair, the willing runner. Here's Kramer. Robinson. Oh, numbers out to the left there for the scrum half, but takes it into Thank contact. Don't go in, don't go in. Last gas stage is here for the Chiefs. Losing bonus point will be the first message, then trying to get themselves back into their game. That is clever from Kramer. Aitchison and Grant coming back. Here is Aitchison against Buchanan. Steps away from one. Still just playing at a Rock, languid no pace is Holly Aitchison. Makes everything look very easy. Just takes the game at the pace that she wants to play it. Good, bye for him. Thank you. So he's hooked to clear and Marley Packer with the carry. Virvas will just okay, settle nine, things here. Go, use it. Nine, use it! She launches the ball into touch after one bounce. On the edge. And Exeter will have a throw and head towards the closing stages. Rachel Burford, your thoughts for the Alliance Premier 15's player in the match? Yeah, I think there's been a number of outstanding performances. I think it goes without saying Holly Aitchison has been brilliant at yep. directing and controlling this game. Great game management. Marley Packer, again, outstanding. But for me, Sharifa Fasolo has been outstanding defensively, and it's been all about the collision Ball. zone today right, and that got... dominance. And she has set the tone throughout the game. 19 tackles within this game, huge amount of work rate. All available, back foot. Top tackler across both teams, and a number of those really dominant. What a season it's been for the 25 year old. Made a debut Roll clear. in the Cup in September. Playing with Blackheath in Championship South 1 last year and now really settling to life in the Premier 15s as Exeter in the closing minutes go in search of this losing bonus point. Still going, the league leaders up in Northamptonshire, Gloucester Hartbury on course three, bonus point win. So they'll be going top as it stands, 33 5. They lead Love for Life. Tackle now, back foot, sorry. Here at the Stone X. This looks as if it's going to be a statement win for the champions. Maisie Allen. Tackle everyone! Not really seen her at her rampaging best, seen moments, as we have from many Chiefs players, but not quite the cohesive performance back, we're back, used back. to. Maloney now. Solo. And Ellis in there as well. Zachary. Shimmy. Step. And a handoff. Back foot. Don't play the nine, good decision, thank you. Poppy Leach taking it forward now. No, don't go in, don't go in 12. Make sure you back foot. Saracens just have to remain committed. Tackles off! And disciplined in defence. Barnage, entry. Another penalty advantage for Exeter. Here back it comes. If you want it. Robinson, quick to take it. Saracens have to go back to the line. Poppy Leach goes direct. Not on the ball. Good low chop there from Isla Alejandro on a replacement. Exeter towards the line. Tackle move. Wanting to Leave head to back line. to Devon with something from this game. Offside. Another advantage on the play. Penalties racking up for Saracens. <laughs> then there's the try. I scored. There is the no score. Time. No time to restart. Ebony Jeffries. Oh, Maisie Allen, I think it is, who's got it, the number seven. And this incredible try scoring season for Allen continues. This takes the Chiefs to within seven, and it's all about forward patience. No time. No and just time. the mentality to keep playing. Know that they're trying to play for something, take something away from this game. Really come alive moments in this second half but not the complete conformance from them but Susie Appleby and her team will be pleased to to finish in the right manner on the flip side of that Saracens will be disappointed to let them in Cantona with the conversion last kick of the game just around the outside of the post but they're within seven a fourth try of course means a try bonus and a losing bonus point for the league leaders so 
Exeter Chiefs take a couple of points away from the Stonex, but this is a big, big win for Saracens. 29-22 here. Exeter's winning run in the Premier 15s is over. 13 bonus points wins in a row coming into this one. Saracens now extend their bonus point streak to nine in a row. And some, some performance from Alex Osterbury's side. Three tries in the first half. Hannah Bottom and Lottie Clapp and Corinne Grant. May Campbell and Sarah McKenna in the second half. A couple of rallying tries towards the end from the Chiefs. Zachary Menin, Buchanan and Allen. But you have to say, a deserved win overall over that 80 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. I think the difference between the two teams today, Saracens took every single opportunity that they created from themselves extra chief just compounding errors on errors worked so hard to get themselves into a great attacking opportunity but couldn't find the execution today slightly off the mark a number of times but knowing what this side is all about they'll go away they'll work on those small errors from in the game they tighten up on a couple of those things and they're in for a real contest and to still draw it back at the end there 22 29 shows good signs about this side that champion Saracens just being relentless and ruthless throughout the 80 minutes never took their eye off the ball throughout the game really strong game management some excellent individuals and the likes of a Hannah Bottomman back into the side just bolsters them we'll get some reaction from Saracens and a word with the Premier 15's player the match Sharifa Kosolo have a look at some of the Stats across that 80 minutes, though, very tight in terms of possession, carries, and the tackles made. Saracen's actually making more than the Chiefs. The Chiefs as well making more metres. Penalties going up for both sides in that second half. It was those scrum penalties, though, that really, really hampered the Chiefs. Going backwards so many times at scrum time, and also struggling when it came to their lineouts as well. The set piece not quite functioning today. Again, I think particularly in that second half and the second part of that, that territory for the Chiefs was uh, something that they can be pleased with in terms of that domination, but obviously not what they did on the scoreboard. Let's go through then. Nine tries overall to get through. And it started with uh, some finish. That oh, could be the best of the afternoon. A prop with a back three finish. Hannah Bottomman on her first start of the season for the club, returning after injury. And uh, she'll have enjoyed this a lot. Yeah, it's definitely going to feature on some highlight reels, that's for sure. But really smart um, from Hannah Bottomman. The dive to the corner, lifting the feet up, being really aware. You know, just the, the smart decision to break around on the outside as well. Really good to see her back and in fine form in a Saracen shirt. And this one a bit more from deep from Saracens. Co-captain Lottie Clapp, the finisher, but Holly Aitchison, the creator. So many times you see us with a ball in hand, carrying in two hands, scanning, assessing then half breaking the line, what an offload and what a line. Yeah, it's just Holly Aitchison, ball in two hands, just questions the defenders, they start sitting off there, then she looks up, sees that she's got two forwards to take on and then Lottie Clapp, one of the best in the world at this, just being on the shoulders of the ball first receiver, trying to hunt out opportunities. This was Exeter's response and when they were down to 14 players, McGovern's kick bounced very, very kindly and then Kate Zachary, as soon as she got her hands on the ball, You'd had no doubt she was going to finish this in the corner. Yeah, quality, wasn't it? Just recognised that the defence came up really high, so a little bit of space in the backfield. And we've seen Kate Zachary score those across the league this year. There was no way that she was going to be able to be stopped from there. Corey Grant responded for Saracens. And it's just some clever build-up work, setting up the play from Jess Breach in particular. The step, the gas and then the soft hands to offload. Yeah, it's just that little kick out, just does enough to stretch Kate Zachary, which then pulls in the defender on the outside and just leaves Corin Grant with a free run in. And then we're speaking about props and finishes, one from Hannah Bottomman. How about this from Delika Menin coming up? Well, it's just absolutely class. Good work from Van der Velde to get her hands free for the offload. What about this afterburners? I mean, we have got some pedigree of props across this league and they just keep getting better and better every game. So 17-12 at half-time. This, the first score of the second half. 
Botsman involved again with the hard carry, and then May Campbell, her 20th try in all competitions this season. Just smart, isn't she? She's always lurking and looking around the ruck. Where's the opportunity? Exeter Chiefs think Saracen's going to play the same way. She just snipes back against them. Still got work to do as she's going over, but that low centre of gravity, she's really impossible to stop that close out. Great celebration from her as well. Then we're on to Sarah McKenna, and this was the forwards hooking them in. And then just recognising space down the blind side. Infante looking to the right initially. Hannah Bottom and so many carries for her this afternoon. And then it was the recognising of space down the blind side. Sarah McKenna finishing this one. Yeah, just lovely soft hands. Marley Packer, Aitchison just does enough to hold on that edge defender. I think it's Simp that actually flies out the line onto Aitchison, which then puts the winger in all sorts of positions trying to defend a three on one. So Sarri's 29-12 ahead at that point. Bonus point secured and looking pretty comfortable, but late tries here from Exeter. Bit of pressure from them, kept going to the end. Katie Buchanan finishing off a well-worked hands move. Yeah, it was a good injection of tempo, wasn't it? All came from the quick tap, catching Saracens on the back foot. Just getting the lines right, and then that just gave them more momentum and confidence in the game. And then this one, right on the stroke of full time. The forwards picking and going, picking and going. They had a penalty advancing, advantage, sorry. And then Maisie Allen going over from such close range. A fourth try, a bonus point. Got them within seven as well, so a losing bonus point secured. 29-22, the final score. Let's get a bit of reaction then from the game. And Ashley Wilmots is in conversation with Sharifa Casolo. Thanks, Nathan. Yes, I'm here with Sharifa. Sharifa, you must be really pleased with that result. How do you feel? I'm, I'm over the moon. I'm, I'm elated. Like it was a battle. We knew it was going to be hard, but I'm just ha so happy for everyone that we, we came on top, and that that's what we set out to do today. I mean, I know you were part of the team who featured in that cup final. You, you know what it's like to play Exeter Chiefs. Yeah. And, and th you knew they were going to come out fighting today. Uh, absolutely. Like I'll give credit to Exeter. They're not messing about, but. We, we knew what to expect and I just think we, we were more clinical when we came out on top. And a lot of uh, different things to consider today, especially the weather. It was hot. You were just saying to me, we were all given some cold towels at half time. What was actually said at half time? Um, half time was just about, you know, we were in a good position, but we just needed to keep on top of ourselves and just keep raising the standard, keep raising the inten intensity. You know, the extra really good at capitalising on, you know, areas where we may knock off for a second. and coming back into it we were like we can't give them that opportunity again and I think that's where we, we were able to step up just being more clinical. You played such a huge part in today's game especially that scrum it was so important to capitalize on those opportunities. Yeah yeah definitely like I have obviously you know the front row the second row is like they are the bodywork but yeah me as a flanker I just want to like do my bit to be loud in the scrum call the ball in and just yeah support the team. Now you go again next week against Worcester Warriors. How are you going to be able to, you know, prepare ahead of um, that one? Yeah, I think same again. You know, Worcester is away, so it's it's just being able to keep to our standards, making sure that we're ready for those away games, and and yeah, just bringing it to them. Well, congratulations, because I know this is your first player of the match uh, in this league. So congratulations and uh, all the best. Yeah, thank you so much. Great to get the thoughts of uh, Sharifa Casolo there in conversation with uh, Ashley Wilmot. So this is how it looks across round 15. Those top three games all played across Saturday. A bonus point wins for Harlequins, Worcester and Bristol Bears. And here this afternoon, the bonus point win for Saracens. But a couple of points to take back to Devon for the Chiefs. The Loughborough Lightning against Gloucester Harbury game. 33-5 that is, but there's still 20 or so minutes it's actually 33 12 in that game now another score from loughborough if you want to watch that one and the closing stages available on premier15s.com this is how the table looks then with that uh cluster Hartbury game still yet to be completed but extra cheese remain top of the table Gloucester Hartbury will leap ahead of them if they secure the win this afternoon Saracens though just closing the gap on the top two in their hunt for a home playoff semi-final. Bristol Bears rounding off the top four and Harlequins and Rachel Burford who we'll be hearing from in just a second. I think still very much as well keen for that top four place. A really intriguing four into five in the closing stages of the Premier 15s. 
Here we are uh, coming up live on England Rugby over the next few weekends. Round 16, the BBC Sport game takes place at Kingso and huge implications across top four for all of these matches. Gloucester Hartbury against Harlequins, that one. And Bristol Bears, Exeter Chiefs as well. Exeter looking to bounce back and Bristol their own top four hopes. Weekend after that, Sale Sharks hosting Gloucester Hartbury. And then the BBC game, that should say Saracens against Bristol Bears, which will take place here at the Stonex Stadium. Let's get a bit more reaction then from Saracens. The head coach, uh, sorry, director of rugby, actually, he's uh, now, of course, called Alex Osterbury. His pitch side, Rachel Burford, has gone down as well. And they all with Ashley Wilmot. Thanks, Nathan. Yes, we're here with Alex Osterbury. Alex, you said it felt like Christmas having the team back. Now you got the win. You know, you must be happy with that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, as I said before, right, they're a very good side, they're very tough, very physical, and they were top of the league, uh, and our top of the league for a reason. Uh, but to, you know, to break them down in the ways that we did, stay in the fight for the vast majority of it and get, you know, a bonus point win, absolutely fantastic. I mean, they didn't make it easy for you, did they? But you were able to capitalise on your opportunities, unlike Extra Chiefs. Yeah, in all honesty, I thought a couple of scores in the first half were very opportunistic. I thought they were, you know, bouncing the ballers, knocking off, gave them it. And then in the second half, you know, they really fought and worked hard for the points. But yeah, I think it's his first game back as a group, so it wasn't going to be perfect. But the fight that we showed and putting ourselves in the in the positions to try and make the most, it was good. I think there's a lot of learnings that have come out from it. But you know, ultimately, five points at home, got pretty happy. You know, Alex just touched on it there, Rachel. It is hard to come back after you've been away from uh, for international duty to come back into the fold, and it was a big game and a big test for both teams. Yeah, it's a big test to come straight back into when you probably had a really limited amount of time for preparation together. You want to manage those players who are coming back off a really big campaign. But, you know, I think both teams struggled early on, but I feel that Saracens really started to settle into the second 20 of the first half, really started to find their feet, good communication, good connections, and you could start to see that really come out in the second half as well. And it must feel good, Alex, because extra Chiefs haven't lost a game since the first round of the Premier 15s, and now, you know, you've just got the win over them and, and stopped them in their tracks. Yeah, to be honest, I don't really mind. Mind you, we get wins against as long as we get them. Yeah, you know, uh, it, as I said to, to the players, and we talked about it before before the game. It's a, it's a big game, and, and they're the ones that want to be involved in. You know, and to come out with the wins, brilliant. But as I said, I don't, I don't really mind if we get five points against as long as as long as we keep getting them. And like you said, you must be really pleased because there was a couple of sticking points. They came back into it, five points in it at one time. Like, how pleased are you about the players who have managed manage those moments and be able to then turn it around, change the momentum? Yeah, I think you know that score before half team was uh, half time was a bit. Of, kicking the teeth and then to come back and respond with the two tries pretty quickly was a real testament to our, our character and, and, and the players being focused. I think there's learnings around that last 10-15 minutes of managing that. I thought we, we invited a lot of pressure and you know some silly penalties, some poor execution and, and didn't really move through the thirds very well. But you know the real important bit after half time we, we got that pretty I wouldn't say spot on but we did pretty well <laughs> there. Um, and that you know that gave us that buffer to ride out that storm at the end. Now, just a quick word on our player of the match, Sharifa Casolo. I mean, it's her first uh, season in the Premier League, uh, league, and also her first player of the match. So she must that must be really you must be really pleased with her. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw Shas play last year, and I was like, crikey, there's a, there's a very good player in there. Lots of potential, unbelievable, powerful. Like she keeps it in, uh, but loves ball in hand offload. So she's she's really exciting, and I think we're only scratching the surface what she can do. She was actually our player for the cup campaign, so mm. she's had some player of, the, of campaigns, just <laughs> this is the first one for the match. Um, and you know, it doesn't it doesn't surprise me. Like it's, we've got a really talented back row, and she's she's not out of place in there, and that just shows the the quality that she's got. And honestly, like it's really exciting where she can get to because you know, it's it's one year being in the, at this level of rugby, and I think you know the next couple of years yeah, it'll be really exciting. And she's got some pretty decent sevens to learn off as well. Yes, a very <laughs> exciting time, definitely. And you go up against the Worcester Warriors next. You know, what can we expect from your side on that one? Uh, hopefully, we, we, we build on the same level of energy and physicality. As I say, we, we're going to have to execute a little bit better uh, and just manage our transition through through the pitch a little bit better because we know that Worcester are dangerous as well. Slightly slightly different game plan to, to what we probably faced today. They like to throw it around, move it. And, they're, you know, they're, they're a team that always causes problems they're always they're always tight whether it be at home whether it be away uh, you know Joe runs a really good ship up there that's a real talented player so you know again we said this this back quarter of the season is going to be tests every week and you want that uh, but yeah we, we're gonna have to be on our metal and back up that performance uh, and making sure that we can 
take care of business, make sure that we, we, we grab that, first of all, playoff berth and then push as hard as we can for that home semi-final. I mean, we are getting to the business end of the season. Every win is so crucial now when it comes to that top four, those top four spots. Yeah, it's really important, but it's also it's the momentum going into that top four. It's really, really important. It builds the confidence, gives, you know, across the entire team that confidence going into those games, knowing that they've got that momentum behind them. They've tried and tested things that are going to work. They might tweak things. So it is important getting the wins for that momentum. It's not just about securing it. It's about everything that can come with it as well. Wow, it's great to speak to you, Alex. Congratulations on the win. Roach, it's been a pleasure working with you and great to be with Nathan Middleton on this one as well. Thank you to everyone watching and tuning in for some more Premier 15s action this afternoon. And we'll be back with you again very soon. And Gloucester Hart will be back in the game. Chance here for Bristol Bears. Into the cheeks. It's lightning with the ball. And Gloucester Hart will be back in the game.